know their tendencies, know their movements, know their average range. So you're not sitting there frustrated and confused. Well, why did the stock only go 50 cents? That stock over there went up $12. Well, how come my own stock only went up 11 cents? Well, that stock went up $8. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, hope everybody had a good day. Hope everybody uh, got a lot of sun, got a lot of smiles, got a lot of good food. Again, enjoy your life. Again, no mulligans, one life to live. Uh, live it up, right? Live it up. So that's what the bulls are doing, right? They're just living it up. Uh, Q's reclaimed two days ago, the 510. Remember the kind of the, the scenario we've been talking about for the last several days. Uh, again, very, very bullish scenarios right now. Uh, two weeks, apparently, to Labor Day. For some reason, I thought it was going away this weekend. It is next weekend. But anyway, uh, market continues to be uh, incredible. I mean, really, really strong. Uh, stocks are waking up all over the place and it's just not just beta so for all the names if we remember guys we, we discussed last night you know I'm not looking at Netflix at least for today again it rested right I wasn't looking at Nvidia today again it rested big beautiful moves doesn't mean they're going lower that just means other names are waking up you look at Tesla after yesterday's really really big move here it rested, you know, even though it was up a couple of bucks today, it still rested. So this is very, very bullish. Names like Microsoft that had big, big runs are just kind of resting. So our, our goal, our plan uh, coming into today's session was looking for stocks that are coming either off a of bottom or just stop going down. So for example, a couple of names, perfect examples. Yesterday we talked about uh, RBLX, first close above uh, this 85 area and it got rejected here five times it closed above you know and not only reclaimed today's session it took out 52 week highs and now we're looking on this macro macro channel uh, to get into the mid 90s again that's a that's a perfect example of a stock coming out of the bottom range reclaiming levels whether it's a 50 day moving average or the 150 whatever the case may be but again not stocks that are coming off the top stocks that are coming off the middle channels again very very aggressive and then we started talking about a name like Amazon, right? That was drifting for the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, it had no, like zero, like zero emphasis to the upside, just drifting, drifting, drifting. And yesterday we had the first move uh, into uh, the 10 day moving average. And we talked about this last night. So this was kind of the scenario and today, yada, 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 had another big move here of 40 points in the day and stopped right in this next supply zone is here. I still think there's one more day on Amazon. They were coming really aggressively today for the 3300 weeklies and the 3350 weeklies so beautiful day two run on amazon but the key again uh is not to put yourself in a situation that you're chasing other stocks performance okay and i you know you, you hear this and i've been hearing this now for like six seven months and you hear traders really complaining about Oh, this market is so slow. This market, so what market are you watching? Okay, it, it, it's it's incredible. We're at all time highs. Okay, names like GameStop, for God's sake, are just losing their minds on random basis. Name, names like AMC. So look, if you don't trade Amazon, if you don't trade Tesla, if you don't trade Facebook, but if these dog shits of the universe are starting to wake up, where exactly is the slow market? So guys, remember, it's not the market. It's never the market. The market could be aggressive. The market could be very slow. It could be very passive. It could be very defensive. The market doesn't care about you, okay? It's not bitching and moaning about the market. It's really kind of taking a step back and kind of just saying, well, wait a minute, maybe my process is just a little weird. And again, just kind of on a side note, if you're trading a dollar stock that goes to a three back to a dollar, it has nothing to do with the market, okay? I, I, I don't remember the last you know, a dollar stock that was included in the S&P 500 that was market sensitive to interest rates and everything else above. So it really does make a difference of what your process is, what groups are you trading. But if you look at the market, not only do you have technology names waking up, you got the meme stocks waking up, the AMCs, the GameStops of the world. Again, what else do you want for strength 
to make you happy. Again, you're never going to get the perfect entry. You're never going to get the perfect pitch that no matter how much size you put on, it's not going to be enough. That, that never happens. That's the whole point of navigating professionally through your whole trading journey. But you have to put yourself in a situation and say, well, wait a minute. If, if, the, if my performance, for example, if your stocks are just really just dying, right, just literally dying and then they're not participating on the strength of the market, number one, you have to reassess the stocks you trade and kind of fine tune and, you know, kind of have a self, you know, kind of have a self moment and look in the mirror and say, listen, is my process uh, good enough to kind of mirror what the market is, is trying to tell us? And again, if you're looking uh, at in the indexes, again, you got Q's, all time highs, you got the Dow. Uh, you know, basically a, st a stone throw away. You got the S and P melting up all time highs, and the question is again, it's not going to last forever. Everybody knows that, right? Mike, those market cycles are going to change for the better, for the worse, and indifferent. But it, it's your job every single day, based on your process, to kind of figure out, you know, what can I do to my process? What can I omit, right? What can I add? What can I omit? Where can I get better and fine tune my process? So I'm not using though, this market suck. Again, all time highs, the market does not suck, not even close to sucking. So you have to kind of self, uh, you know, self evaluate your process, really pick it apart with a fine tooth cone, see where you're struggling in your process, see where you're struggling in your uh, stock selection. And, and again, I, I think if you do trade, again, for example, like I trade high, high beta mega cap tech stocks, right? I, I trade basically the same stocks over and over and over again. That's my comfort zone. And, and I've always said this, if you can get in bed with a group of stocks or an index, whatever the case may be, that you're constantly trading over and over again. I, I forgot somebody tweeted, tweeted this out um, this afternoon. I apologize. I, I just don't, I don't, remember, I don't remember the gentleman's name, but it is a good idea to, to um, it is a great idea to kind of uh, get, you know, get, intimately with your, with your stocks, know their tendencies, know their movements, know their average range. So you're not sitting there frustrated and confused. Well, why did the stock only go 50 cents? That stock over there went up $12. Well, how come my stock only went up 11 cents? Well, that stock went up $8. Again, when you trade random stocks, you're going to have random results. And the more you become uh, intimate, again, it's kind of a weird, weird word uh, to use with, with, as far as trading, but when you, you become with the intimate workings of the way your, your stock trades, the liquidity, the average true range, the spread, and its tendencies, things start to get easier. And instead of talking about how bad or how good the market is, now you're concentrating on your individual process and you're saying to myself, what can I do better? What can I omit? What can I add? And sometimes when do I have to take a step back to take three steps forward? And that's the cold trader's journey. There's no such thing as a perfect process. There's no such thing as a perfect trader. There's no such thing as a human being. So why are you trying to be perfect? The question is, what is your process lagging? What can you do to make it better? And what can you do to take necessary steps that you're trading not for tomorrow, but 20 years from now? So again, bull market continues uh, again, like I said yesterday, and I said the day before and the day before that, you don't have to be creative. Guys, look through the charts. They're, 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 they're screaming at you with whether they're beta names, whether they're uh, mid cap names, whether they're meme names, for God's sake, even the memes woke up today. We'll, we'll see the individual pivots in a second, but the values out there, the meat and potatoes are out there. You don't have to reach because somebody is screaming on social media that the $2 stock is going to go to nine. The charts are right in front of you. And if you go through uh, the, the queues, if you go through the S&P 500, it will, it will take you, what, 100 stocks to, to go through on the on the queues and 500 stocks in the S&P. It's going to take you 15 minutes. You'll see there's so much value, so much meat left in this market. You don't need to chase the hot stock of the day. You don't need to chase the stock that already put up a 30-point candle in three days. You're looking for value coming off the bottom channels that are taking, uh, reclaiming the 50, the 100, 150-day moving average, the 5 and the 10s is obviously short-term basis and you're making your actual watch list uh, according to that plan. So let me talk about, let's talk about some ideas for tomorrow. We'll get into the individual pivots in a second. RB, I mean, I love this RBLX, man. This thing had a monster move. We talked about this last night, had an absolute monster move off this 85 level, right? 85. And now it's coming into a big macro cycle that's been rejected from July. If this thing takes out this July cycle, man, this thing is going 95, 96, any weakness tomorrow, any weakness into rising 60 minute support. 
uh, you got to take a shot off that rising support because if this thing goes green and just really takes out this channel, you're going to have a ne next leg up. Um, again, a, a name, for example, like DDD. I, I forgot who gave us uh, the heads up. I, you know, this wasn't my original idea, but I really love the setup here. Again, here's another perfect example of a stock that right got rejected off the 50, right? Rejected off the 50, rejected off the 50. If DDD, and they had some really good earnings, really, really good earnings here. If it starts reclaiming the 50-day moving average, re remember how important that 50-day is. If it starts reclaiming, okay, right, you're not buying the stock up here or up here or up here or up here. You're buying it right here on the same level. It's been rejected two times in a row, maybe third time's a charm to start its ne next leg up. Even a name like Etsy, right? That, uh, remember we were talking about Etsy had a really nice breakout above this 97.5, and it kind of, kind of, you know, kind of got hit yesterday for absolutely no reason. It reclaimed the levels right back today. So this thing still looks good. If this thing could just maybe have a day two, you could still see 205, 206 in this Etsy. This thing looks really, really uh, good. Can Amazon have one more day? It could, right? I, I think Amazon could have one more day just strictly just because they did come uh, very aggressively with some size for the 3350s. So you could get one more day of upside. Again, it's not a premium setup by no stretch of the imagination. I thought I thought today's setup was a lot better because it was confirming the 10 day moving average, but there's still solid value uh, going into tomorrow's session uh, on a name like Amazon. And even Penn, shout out to Dave Portnoy, pizza review time, one bite, everybody knows the rule, right? Football season's coming on. Look at Penn, right? Look at Penn. Again, look at the, how tight this bottom channel is. Again, you don't want to, you're not buying Penn up here. Look, check this out, right? You're not buying Penn up here, up here, up here. You're buying this thing from the damn bottom channel. And look how many times it's gotten rejected off the same level, once, twice. If this thing finally confirms here, you got 5 to $7 of upside, and the stock is not even close to breaking out macro. And these are what we talk about sneaky channels, sneaky pivots, whatever the case may be, but there's still a lot of value in this market. It just takes a little bit of effort, uh, some really good research, and again, keep it simple, man. You don't want to complicate things. You don't want to overthink, and the most important thing is you don't want to chase. You don't want to chase another stock's performance. Again, we're not looking to trade momentum. We're looking to find value that turns into momentum, and that's the bottom line every single day, and that's exactly what we're trying to do on the research for the next day. So let's talk about uh, this morning's uh, list, again, a lot of really good value, right? Uh, Tesla, I, I traded Tesla three times today, three times. It had a huge move yesterday, right? Uh, it relaxed today. My, I first caught a Tesla into rising some 60 minute support. We always talk about strong stocks the next day that we open up week. So I caught Tesla, Tesla. I caught Tesla for a nice bounce uh, off the rising 60, then opening range highs. And then this number is going to be pretty big uh, going forward. It stopped again uh, off this 15 level. That 15 level is very, very big. we got to watch it for the next couple of days. It's got rejected pre-market today at 15. It got rejected again today on the regular session 15. we got to watch this number. Uh, RBLX, again, uh, 85, 86 needs to build. It closed, you know, it closed right near 90. Uh, huge move there. Uh, ISEE, we talked about, I think we talked about this briefly last night's video. Uh, 10 and a quarter rejected two times needs to build. Here was ICEE, -E, right? Here was ICEE, -E, took out the 10 and a quarter, uh, ran into the 1060s, and then again, like every smaller cap stock. This is again why I don't trade smaller cap stocks. They, you know, we could have this conversation at 11 and we could have this conversation at 9. Yeah, both. So the point is, again, if you trade smaller cap names, just understand you're not trading Tesla. You're not trading Facebook, right? You're not trading Amazon. These are, right? They are what it are. So, you know, 40 cent move, 50 cent move on IC today. If you traded it, God bless. Again, not really uh, my cup of tea. Uh, Mankind never confirmed this channel. Uh, Snap had an initial pop into the 7630s, never had a second entry. MRNA I actually really liked coming into today. Never confirmed, not even close uh, they sold off mRNA pretty aggressively here. We were watching for the 414 area, uh, never came close. They sold this sucker uh, pretty aggressively right from the word go. Uh, Amazon, right? So we talked about this. Uh, 3283 needs to build for a day to bounce. Here was Amazon, right? So it took out the 3283 level. That was the high from this channel here and traded right pretty much the highs, uh, 3315. Again, I still think there's one more. Uh, one more trade there. Uh, AMD 110 rejected three three times pre-market. Obviously, never got to uh, 110 either. Uh, ZM, you know, we're waiting for ZM. Never, you know, never, you know, never got close to the 347 level 
RBLX again just started going nuts. 87 went to 90. Uh, DDOG I still like, never got there. Coin I still like at 61, never got there. Uh, Facebook, not a big move, not a big move at all, but 367 macro, huge spot. Only ran up a buck, which I was very, very surprised, uh, but it only ran up a buck. It took out 37, went to 38, excuse me, took out 67, went to 68, and then came back in. Um, you know, very, very interesting, but I still like it. I still, I'm still going to watch it for the next couple of days. Uh, Amazon again coming in for the 3350 weeklies. Uh, 3309 for supply, yada, 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 89 on deck, new highs. This was the 60, 68 area on that, right to supply. Uh, Netflix, I still like, 274 on square, got rejected off that area here. And here is the crazy one, right? Here is the crazy one. This is my whole point of how can somebody turn around and say the market sucks. Again, if you don't trade beta, that's fine. But if you're trading all these other, you know, crazy stocks, I hate to say it, all right, I mean, you know, I'm not day drinking, but 3885, 39 AMC needs to build. GameStop going nuts, and you know, this thing went absolutely nuts. If all you guys caught it, congratulations. Uh, so it took out, it took out this whole 39 level. And all it did when is, well, all, all, all in all, it only went to 48 bucks. So other than that, it really didn't do anything. So that's it, guys. Uh, really good, strong market right now. Uh, we're still getting a lot of value. Again, every single day is not going to be all crazy and you know fireworks and all that stuff but if again if you put yourself in a position uh do your homework do your your research and really fine tune uh your strategy again it's going to get easier with time again year three as a trader is going to be a lot different than year 15 a lot different than year 22 so give yourself time to put yourself a lot of pressure but the most important part is continue to work guys god bless and i'll see you all tomorrow